the treatment the anterior uveitis the drug of choice is topical steroids okay however we know that there are uh, adverse effects the most important one is glaucoma for topical steroids and cataract for systemic steroids so the usually used topical steroids are betamethasone dexamethasone prednisolone fluoromethadone now an important point you have to note here is the anti-inflammatory potency of the steroid because the more the potency more is the glaucoma causation so more strong the steroid more uh, uh, possibility of the patient landing in glaucoma so dexamethasone is the strongest that is it has the highest anti-inflammatory potency it causes the maximum glaucoma fluoromethalone is the weakest and it causes the minimum glaucoma so it is called the soft steroid fluoromethalone is called the soft steroid okay now let's look at another important drug that is cycloplegics usually we know that atropine homatropine cyclopentylate and tropicamide these are the cycloplegics used in uh, ophthalmology so these are the ones used in uveitis as well so for the action for you to remember atropine is the most potent and the action lasts for 14 days followed by homatropine where it lasts for three days cyclopentolate the action lasts for one day tropicamide is the weakest and least potent lasting only for six hours so why do we use cycloplegics over here is because they relieve the ciliary spasm so the patient is relieved of pain okay so because anterior uveitis has a lot of pain the drug of choice will be cycloplegics right also other uh, mechanisms by which they reduce the uveitis is they dilate the pupil and reduce the vascularity so when the pupil is dilated they help in breaking the synechia you can see in this picture that all the synechia are broken the pupil is no more like the festooned pupil just because of using your cycloplegics right now home atropine is the preferred drug for treatment in adults but in children atropine ointment is the preferred drug why do we prefer atropine in children is because the ciliary tone is very high in children the ciliary tone is very strong so you'll have to need a strong cycloplegic and choice of drug will be atropine then why we use ointment and not drops because the drops only 20% is absorbed and 80% is drained through the nasolacrimal duct and goes into the systemic circulation. This can result in atropine toxicity in children. So we use atropine ointment and avoid drops. Now management of intermediate uveitis is by steroid injection because the drops cannot penetrate so deep so as to reach the past plana or uh, vitreous we will use injectable steroids the only one we use is triamcinolone okay it is given by either like this the subconjunctival root or the subtenone root it is a bit more risky because you can perforate the sclera if you are not careful right in subtenone's injection the only injection for intermediate uveitis is triamcinolone steroid injection. Now for posterior uveitis, for infections obviously you will go for the antibiotics and for toxoplasmosis in pregnancy please remember the drug of choice is spiramycin and heart therapy for HIV right highly effective antiretroviral therapy and gancyclovir is the drug for cytomegalovirus so spiramycin for toxoplasmosis in pregnancy heart for hiv and gancyclovir for cmv and systemic steroids are given here not topical kindly note systemic steroids but you have to limit their usage for less than three months okay now let's have a quick revision with comparison of the three types of uveitis anterior is iritis or iridocyclitis 
Intermediate is pars planitis or vitritis and posterior is chorioretinitis. Anterior and intermediate both most common causes idiopathic whereas for the posterior uveitis is it, it is toxoplasmosis. For anterior uveitis presenting features are most important one is pain then redness and loss of vision. However in both intermediate and posterior uveitis pain and redness are absolutely absent. Your only complaint with which the patient comes to you is loss of vision and floaters in intermediate uveitis and only loss of vision in posterior uveitis. Now the characteristic features, hallmarks of each of them, right? We have seen these are the cells in anterior uveitis, then snowballs and snow banking in intermediate uveitis and headlight and fog in toxoplasmosis and vitritis vasculitis or chorioretinitis. Coming to the management, topical steroids and cycloplegics, cycloplegics being the most important ones for anterior uveitis. For intermediate, your drug will be injectable triamcinolone that is subconjunctival or subtenone. Then for posterior uveitis, you will give antimicrobials and systemic steroids. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at Medico App. Now, thanks for watching the video. Now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.